Hello again, guys. We are still reading Stick Dog, and we are now on chapter five. Chapter five. So if you have this book and you want to see what page it starts on, remember you can always look in the table of contents. And we want to find chapter five, A Warrior Human Attacks. And it starts on page 68. So then I can scroll through and... It starts on page 68. <clears throat> so let's think about what happened in the last chapter. So in chapter four, we learned about Pooh Pooh and how Pooh Pooh really dislikes squirrels. Let's see if we can find that picture. Yeah, she just doesn't like squirrels. She said squirrels just are not good to her. They're always mean. They always tease her. So she found that squirrel up in the tree. So Pooh Pooh does not like squirrels. Okay, now the last time we know at the very end of the chapter that we found out that they were headed to Picasso Park to go to find hamburgers. Okay, chapter five. A warrior human attacks. Ooh. Mm. It was about a two mile run to the park. They traveled across a creek, up and down several tree covered hills and across a meadow. Picasso Park was surrounded by walnut trees, goldenrod clumps, cattail reeds, and honeysuckle bushes. The dog settled in behind some of the shrubbery, safely out of sight of any humans. Mutt inhaled deeply, taking in the aromas, remember aromas are smells, from the grill on the other side of Picasso Park. Welcome to Hamburgerville, he said with a grin. Population? Us. Karen groaned and rolled her eyes. Hmm. Follow me, said Stick Dog. We need to be able to see a little better. They flattened themselves against the ground and scurried forward on their bellies, pulling themselves with their front legs. Several small hills surrounded the park, and it was atop one of these hills where the dog stopped beneath a walnut tree. All five dogs peered toward a gazebo on the other side of Picasso Park. So they see it. Oh my gosh, I see something. Hmm. A woman with a yellow apron was grilling. Oh, we got some right here too. Two kids, a boy and a girl, were kicking a soccer ball. I see that. Get that visual image. And a man, presumably the father, was setting out paper plates on a picnic table. I think that's where the hamburgers are going to be. This is going to be tougher than I thought, said Stick Dog, peeking over the top of the hill. There are four humans. That's more than I'd hoped. I thought we could all run in as fast as possible. Stick Dog stopped talking. He didn't stop talking because he had finished his thought. He stopped talking because Stripes had suddenly sprinted down the hill as fast as he could toward the smoking barbecue grill. Where's she going? asked Stick Dog. I think she heard you say, run in as fast as possible. And, uh, oh, Mutt lost his train of thought as he watched Stripes fly down that hill at full speed. She was a streaking black and white blur. And, uh, she, like, took off. I hadn't finished my sentence, said Stick Dog, exasperated. I was going to say, I thought we could all run in as fast as possible and grab the hamburgers, but we won't be able to now because there are too many humans. If there were just one or even two, maybe we could have handled it, but not four. We need to come up with something clever. Stick Dog? P Stick Dog? Poo Poo asked. Yes, Stick Dog sighed. He was frustrated that Stripes had zoomed off and he hoped Poo Poo might have a solution. Poo Poo was looking up into the walnut tree nervously. Can we move out from under this tree? These are really big nuts. Ooh, remember in the last chapter? A squirrel dropped an acorn on her head. Walnuts are bigger than acorns. Poo Poo's thinking. If there's a nasty tail shaking squirrel up there and he drops one of those walnut bombs on my head, it's really gonna hurt. Stick Dog closed his eyes for a moment. Let's not worry about that right now, Poo Poo, he said. We'll move in a minute, I promise. Right now, we have to worry about Stripes running off by herself against four humans. 
but got her still running down the hill, going after the grill. Look, she's almost there, Karen exclaimed. Man, she's fast, said Mutt. I've seen faster, said Pooh Pooh, unimpressed. She's going downhill, and the wind's beneath her. That's all. Stripes was indeed almost there. She had begun to slow her pace and shorten her stride as she approached the unattended grill. None of the family had seen her yet. The boy and the girl were off in the grass on the other side of the gazebo while the man and the woman were unpacking supplies from a wicker basket. Stripes slowed to a walk and then stopped. She hid behind a bench near the grill. It was only then that she looked around and realized she was alone. Her head jerked up and her eyes focused on Stick Dog, Mutt, Karen, and Poo Poo, who were staring at her from the top of the hill. It was at this exact moment when Stripes was looking away from the gazebo that the mother unpacked a long silver two-pronged fork. When Stripes turned back around, there was the mother holding that long silver two-pronged fork. It glinted and shone in the sunlight as she carried it toward the grill. That was all Stripes needed to see. Any thought of trying to grab those hamburgers by herself vanished. She stared at the woman through the back slats of the bench. The woman came near, holding that fork, then snapped her fingers and turned around, returning to the basket. That was the split-second opportunity Stripes needed. She came sprinting back up at the top of the hill. Get down, get down, Stick Dog said urgently to the others. We can't let them see us. They all scooched back out of sight of the family. It was only a matter of seconds before Stripes came hurtling over to the top of the hill to join them. What happened? Where were you guys? She asked, panting. <sighs> I hadn't finished talking, Stick Dog said. I was saying I wanted us all to run in as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah, Stripes interrupted. That's what I did. But we wouldn't be able to because before, because there were too many people. You ran off before I could finish my sentence, Stick Dog exclaimed. Oh, Stripes said and dropped her head a little still panting. <sighs> Sorry about that. Hmm. Just stay here with us, okay? Okay, sure thing, said Stripes. Her voice turned deadly serious as she addressed Poo Poo, Karen, and Mutt. Listen, I've got very bad news. Those aren't just normal humans down there. They're like super warrior humans or something. Very mean and very dangerous, I think. They have weapons. What do you mean? asked Mutt. That warrior woman, Stripes said, has a double-bladed silver sword. That was a big fork, Stick Dog said, but nobody heard him. The others were focused on Stripes. The fear and anxiety in her voice commanded all of their attention. She was charging at me! She was walking, Stick Dog corrected. She was going to stab me with it! She was going to flip the hamburgers on the grill! Then she went back to that evil basket to get another weapon. She was getting salt, Stick Dog sighed again. Mutt, Poo Poo, and Karen didn't hear anything that Stick Dog had said. They were staring. They were starting to panic. The fear made them back further and farther down the hill away from the park. And to Stick Dog's dismay, away from the hamburgers. Stop, Stick Dog said firmly. Everyone calm down. Come back up here. They're not warriors with weapons. They're just having a picnic. And they use that metal thing to cook the hamburgers. That's all. Hmm. They don't use it to stab hamburger thieves? Asked Stripes. Of course not, Stick Dog said. Are you sure? Mutt, Karen, and Poo Poo asked in unison, inching back up the slope towards Stick Dog. I'm sure. Stick Dog nodded. Come on, come look. They all peered down at the gazebo. Sure enough, the woman was turning the hamburgers with a long silver fork. I don't know, Stick Dog, Mutt said, still, wor still wary. This might be too dangerous. Look at the two little humans. They look like warriors, too. How so? Well, that girl can kick that black and white ball about 100 miles per hour. And that boy, just look at him. He's letting the ball hit him right on top of the head over and over and over again. That's amazing, said Karen. 
I'm pretty sure that's just how they play with that kind of ball, said Stick Dog. Are you nuts? Mud exclaimed. What kind of creature would let himself get knocked on the head over and over and over and over again like that? Stick Dog? asked Poo Poo, looking back up at the walnut tree. Yes, Stick Dog answered, trying to keep his composure. His stomach now felt almost empty, and the smell of those sizzling hamburgers was drifting right up at the hill at them. Can we please move out from under this tree? Yes, yes, said Stick Dog. Follow me, nice and low, to that honeysuckle bush. They all followed Stick Dog to the honeysuckle bush. Something about the sweet aroma of the honeysuckle flowers and Stick Dog's soothing voice settled the other four dogs considerably. All right, time to make a plan, said Stick Dog. We've made it this far. We've found the hamburgers. Now we just have to figure out how to get the hamburgers. The end of this chapter. All right, guys. So chapter five, a warrior human attacks. Oh my, did they really get attacked? I don't think so. Stripe just ran fast, 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 fast down that hill. And when she got to the grill, she hid behind the bench. She was hiding behind it. And she was watching the mom and the mom had what he thought was a weapon. But it was really something just to flip the burgers. She just needed to flip the burgers on the grill. Oh man, those dogs were silly. And then they were all a little scared, but Stick Dog calmed them down. Okay, and the next chapter is called Chapter Six, Karen is Missing. Karen is Missing. Uh-oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Let me think about it, and we'll read again soon. Bye-bye, guys.